Thank you for joining us on Diaspora Lounge again today. Today we want to talk about surviving relocation because when we move from uh, home countries, we're getting into a new culture and a new, a new system where things are different. Um, our culture plays a lot in our family dynamics. When we move, we have to make certain adjustments so that we're able to continue living together and thriving as a family. But the changes in the system, in culture, in the society, and in the law, in the way things are done in our new society, has a big role on our family situations. And some people have said that families are breaking up just for the fact that they relocated. I'm going to play the intro. Thank you for being with us. First thing you want to do is to regain your power. And it takes two to come. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. You must have heard people say, I'm never going to relocate. You, I've heard some men say that, that they're never going to relocate. And I believe that the reason is because for us Nigerians, men, husbands have a lot of liberties back home. And they're thinking, if we relocate, we're going to have this problem. We're going to have difficulty uh, being in control of the family. And, we're, and that woman is also going to have the law and the system to use against me. So what do you what do you feel? Um, Coco, do you want to go first? Yeah, the truth of the matter is this. I, I do have, well, at least I know of one person that said exactly what you're you're saying. Um I know when he says that he actually means the womanizing thing. I, th I think that's what's primary on their mind, really. Um, this is a society, you see, they have their runoff impression that the society, this society, they support women and, okay, now say this, when the law chooses to do justice and that justice happens to lay on the side of a particular gender, which in most cases is a female gender, I think is even a runoff to say that the law favors women because i tell you what as a lawyer that for these women because remember we follow the common law system right so the same laws that are say like in the united kingdom are the same laws that we follow in nigeria predominantly even about women i remember in those days having done family law and all that you know all my aunties i'm like do you know you don't need to be here suffering do you notice that that the law is but you see what the problem is it's the culture, right? It's the culture. The culture tends to override the law. Remember we had that conversation. <laughs> yes. The culture tends to override the law. So if you're a woman watching, it's, 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 it's a matter of, do you want to go to the law to get your justice? R to be honest, you don't even need to live abroad or in Nigeria. Now, and for the men who feel okay the law protects women those same laws are in nigeria know it now that it's just a cultural thing and you know these uh, will don't do this don't you know a uh, woman can leave her husband and that, you know by the time family members are kind of culture that is why she's not instigating that law but bear in mind that she can so you need to ask yourself as a male if I'm a just person, if I'm an, oh, nobody's perfect, but let's just say if I'm the type that, listen, I'm self-aware of seeing, we all are anyway. We, If there's one single human being that says they're not aware of what seeing is or what is wrong, they're lying. We all do. So since we're self-aware, do you not think that is worth doing the right thing? And if you're the type of person that you love justice, you, you love what is right, to be honest, relocating abroad wouldn't even be an issue at all. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be. What are you afraid of? I've seen a few things on Facebook. Um, there's someone, a friend of mine, in fact, don't even bother to open his because anything he posts there is always some guy at the train station or outside is screaming my wife has kicked me out the brothers oh don't bring your wives to the uk this is what now women do they did that 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 and i was glad i read certain responses that said what did you do to your wife they're very quick to post themselves on social media and present themselves as the wife kicked them out of the house what did you do 
there are some <laughs> circumstances. Yes, you, you should be out on the street because if you're behaving that way, i.e., you beat her up, or i.e., you're 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 suppressing her so much, things get to the level. If you beat her up, there's so many things. There's so many issues. You know, mm. so sort yourself out. Really, that's I think just then you can come. Isn't it? Um, yeah, right person. I'm just thinking that it's. To me, this thing is usually it comes down to the individual, um, culture and the law aside. I think it really all comes down to the individual. And you also said that while you were talking because you're like everybody knows what is seen and what is wrong. And then you know this thing about what did you do to your wife? The truth also sometimes is that both male and female can be bad people. So even the man who That's is correct. in the station, yeah, because some of us, and the reason you were talking like that is because you, you are thinking about yourself, knowing that you wouldn't do, and I know because you like to make, to play things fair, knowing that yeah, you wouldn't that's... just do that to a man, so you wouldn't do that to your husband. But some of us women are, are actually as bad as anybody else, you know, we take advantage of the situation and we are wicked. Some of us are wicked. Um, no, be, being that evil now, that, yeah, and I'm glad you, you made the point and and i'm glad that you also made the point that i'm thinking me in presenting me as in that's what all women or at least most women do they do the right thing and their husbands are but you know i'm glad you made this point yes there are some women that are horrible there are some women that lay in ambush and there are some women they're not horrible they can always play because we all have evil in us just that we choose is a choice not to be evil and they're at home and they're suffering right under the hands of this man this plans of coming abroad now come in fact they will even encourage the guy but they have their game plan right yes, yes. and just like you said as soon as they come here because yeah. they know, okay, there's no brother, sister, that I mean, some random relations here and there living to call you on the phone, even who has the time to come to your house, come and say, oh, you and your husband, there, come back, no family meeting. Mm -hmm. So some women then take the advantage to say, good. That's the opportunity. You know, you know, sometimes also you could be in a situation where you really do want to rebel. You know, it's not right what the treatment you're getting, mm. but the circumstances of the moment mm. prevents you. And mm. if you keep telling the person and you keep telling the person and the person doesn't want to change, and you mm. know that you can't leave, maybe i.e. financial reasons or one or two things, no you know what you now do? You now sit back, reanalyze and re-strategize. Yes. Right, because yes. you can't. You get to that point where you accept that the guy will not change, or out of choice, he has chosen not to change. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you get to that point of re-strategizing, one of the re-strategies is, guy, let's come to abroad. Or the guy is saying he sells the idol, you sell it. Okay, let's and not sell them because we want those victims to be able to use that strategy. <laughs> yeah, and what that woman <laughs> does essentially, and those are some of those women that yes. you see they actually yeah. had their plans from you've heard of some people from the airport they'll tell you oh yeah start going yes yes and you know, you know but you know the funny thing I, I'll would tell you, you blame that I'm... woman would you blame I'm... that woman for having a plan no of course not well how, how would you blame her and the and other thing is um sorry i can we have the women have taken over this conversation then do you know that there are also some women who even in this society are being beaten up and they are still living with it because True. they're in a mental, yes, they're in this, they're in the mental bondage where even in this society where everybody thinks that, well, the woman can just up and yeah. she can just make yeah. any. Some people yeah. are living here and they are still being beaten. I do know yeah. some people like that. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. And they are, yes, they are being used to do anything, all manner of things. And so some men are able to do that because they've been able to subjugate this woman in such a way that she really believes that this is all. Sometimes, even last week, there was one that the man, after doing everything he did, he left, and she was the one who was wanting him to remain. And I was like, "Are you mad?" And because it's okay, you were making salient points. I like the way you took it from both sides, especially on this, uh, Uzo, when you pointed the, pointed out the fact that there are women who actually are calculating. But what I say is that there's in this situation, there is always no smoke without fire. Uh, before a, a woman, a, um, a wife, someone that you married,
will turn around and begin to scheme and begin to strategize. But some of us are not married material. Some of no, us no. human beings no, are just uh, bad. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that before a wife or, a, I mean, your wife decides to start scheming to lure you abroad, sell the idea to you and all of that, you must really have gotten to a head and you must have, as a man, created a, uh, an impression that, well, it's either my way or, you, or, 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 or the highway or there's no escape for you that she feels that maybe in Nigeria, if she ever muted the idea, that means you've closed all avenues of redress and reconciliation or, you know, amending the situation. What I say, uh, but I don't want us to uh, maybe um, uh, dwell too much on this negative side. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that as a man, if you if you find yourself in that situation then to a very large extent you have yourself to blame because all that you would have needed to do to avoid such a situation no matter what is going on between you and your wife is to be a human being to be decent yeah just be a human being see her as another human being forget wife forget just see her as another human being and try in, um, in, in, a very, in a very simple way to put yourself in a position. If I'm not allowed to talk, if I'm not allowed to speak my truth, if I'm not allowed to express myself, if I'm being beaten, let, let, let's even say as a man, all of those are happening to you. Maybe, let's say by another, by another man, do you understand? I just want to give that example. Yeah, so, yeah. If all those basic things of life are not being, you are not being allowed to express them and enjoy them, would you, would you not do probably worse than the woman would do? You understand? So, though, but, but the issue basically is that, as I say, a lot of the problems actually. And, okay, I want to say this. I want to correct the no, erroneous notion. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Um, Coco said it. The, the, the system abroad is not um, set up in a way to favor the female or the woman. It just creates a level playing field. That's all. That's all. That's all. Yeah, that's all. It just, it just creates. That's all. It is only people who oh. are who have negative What's attitudes and negative behaviors, you understand me, uh, based on one concept of culture. Even, even, even in Africa, nobody has said you, should, you can maltreat your wife. Mm. Even if you have three, four wives, nobody, it, it is not accepted in any culture to beat your wife. It's an adulteration of culture. Mm. And the wrong and negative, even if you have four wives, you are not meant to beat. How, how do you mm -hmm. even condescend to the point of beating someone you claim you love? Because I, I want to beat her. I want to correct her because... No, <laughs> it, she, she's not a child. She's an adult like you. Mm. you. So how do you begin? So it's not a cultural thing. It's, a, it's an individual thing. I lived in Africa. I grew up in Africa. I have never raised my hand against any of my girlfriends before I, I, I got married. Even I have, your adult children, would you beat them? Yes, I will not. I, I, I have not. I have not. I, I mean, I that, tell that's you, a good any point. Child, any child you are raising your hand against after 12, it means that you have not done your job. You understand? So, that's even for children. Any child that you are raising your hand after 12, 13 then it means that you wasted all of those years because by the time the child is 12 to 13, you're not supposed to be raising your hand. Your this talk, opens up another your eye, your even we are talking about men and women, the and ideas so, of men and women. So, so what I'm trying to say, because we're talking about children and all of that also. But I get why he, he deviated a bit. Too, yes. just, so that, just like he said also, you wouldn't even beat your child as an adult. So how yes. come your wife that is older than that, your adult yes. child? Why, why do you think beating or maltreating or misbehaving to 
or an adult is going you to mean correct something is wrong that, with you you cannot self regulate yeah he, he's going to correct that adult you know the moment you start thinking that way then there's a problem with you the person to me you know to 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 resort to violence in changing someone's maybe misbehavior or character if you, let's even assume that the woman is misbehaving uh, 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 okay, please. Can I interrupt you? With this? Yeah. Are, can we can we really talk about chores? About doing chores? Because some some people are like, I will never. If the man is like, I will never. It's not in, in a man's place to do any house chores like mm. uh, dishes or laundry or anything. And both of you are now living abroad. And some people feel like it's a it's a way of emasculating a man. And gradually, the woman is going to think less of him. <sighs> People have, people, in fact, so when I hear some things, I just look at it as, uh, one, in a fam it depends on how people see a family. A family is a unit. And for that unit to be cohesive, certain people in that family must be doing one thing or the other to make, to make their family go around and to make it to be well orchestrated and function well. While the wheels. Now, yeah, so you, know, you cannot you cannot say that because oh, because you come from Africa. It's not about the African thing. Okay, if, if you are so rich, you understand me, that you don't want to do house chores, then you can hire a, a maid. You can hire house, uh, not house help. Now, maybe people import house help from Nigeria. Abi, mm -hmm. you can import house help from Nigeria or you can hire people who will be helping you clean your house and you'll be paying them for hour. You understand me? But what I'm trying to say, it is not a definite, uh, what do you call, but what I, I try to answer people who carry on on this wrong notion of culture. The idea is that nobody even needs to tell you, okay, oh, help out with this, help out with that, oh, le let's do this. Because you can already see, okay, if you have a wife that works abroad, if your wife does not work, and she's the only one, and she's she's a homekeeper. You go to work, you hustle all the hustle, and you bring all the money home. Maybe it can be un, uh, understandable. The same wife that also works like you, you expect her to do 90, 80 percent of the chores in the house. Definitely. And when you go to the house and that woman is busy, maybe she's also doing exams. You will see that house very filthy. So, so what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, as a bachelor, when you are a bachelor, eh, before you got married, you hardly, if you see something out of place, you pick it and put it back. Oh, right? How come you were able to do it as a man, right? So you do it, and then because you now feel that because the woman is in the house, or even that you have children, then when you see it, you don't do it again, and you think and you think that is normal. Even to yourself, you should be you should be asking you, you should be questioning yourself. What, what questioning your sanity. Yeah, what 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 have I become? I mean, I mean, my I know how my sitting room used to be when I was when, and then now I, every everywhere is littered. I don't pick things up. I don't do this. I don't when I see something wrong, I don't correct it immediately. Or even if it, I don't do it, call the children to say, okay, come and fix this. Or if it's something that's within their powers. But what I'm trying to say is that it's just a notion. It is not an African thing. May I quickly say something? Yeah. You know, I've noticed something with um. I've noticed something. I've I've I have, I have observed people in their homes, um, yeah. men who are of different cadres, of different professions, doctors, yeah. lawyers, accountants, um, IT professionals, uh, security men, um, admin people, and I've noticed something. I've actually seen that those people doing those those um respected ones, the more respected ones like the lawyers, the doctors, and all that. I've seen them doing house chores. I've seen them cooking. Who's there in house chores? Who's there? It's your house. Of course, I've even seen I've even seen even others who are doing menial jobs. I've seen those people cook and do and do those things for their wives and children, for their family. And then, but the truth is, honestly, the people that I've actually seen having this problem are the ones who are in a in a in something where they aren't proud of. The person who is doing is, yes, so the, the home is their because, is their proud moment. So it's like in the home now. <laughs> so it's almost like they, they they don't feel big enough, and so when they come home, 
that's when they start to flex their muscles. Okay, so, they want so, to feel big at yeah. home. so if you pay attention, any man who is doing this, if, but even sometimes I've also seen somebody who is very well paid doing that. But if you look at yourself, you will see that it means that your impression of yourself is little. So it means that whatever you're doing, it's looking like it's coming from within you. It's not about you and your wife. It's coming from within you and you are seeing yourself as you are not big enough. And so here I have to struggle. Like Coco said the other day, you don't see Tony Elumelu coming and saying, I'm the CEO, I'm the CEO. So it's like someone who is already feeling small is the person who tries to make themselves appear so okay, big okay. and important. They yeah. see so you need, some, you need to work on yourself. That's what you Yeah, need to it, it's a, that, as I said, it's a personal thing. It's not... It's, it's an individual thing. It's not something, there's no rule somewhere that says, okay, it depends on the dynamics of the house. There are some houses where the woman will do majority of the chores, maybe because of maybe her employment status or, or more time that she has on her hands and all of that. But even then, as a man, you're still supposed to help out. Even if you are doing, there are days you're not going to be busy. There are days you can just pick up one thing and do that affects the next one month. Do you understand? Yeah, it boils down to being a selfish. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dynamics, the dynamics of a home determines what. But if two people, uh, husband and wife, are home, okay, let me give you a scenario. Husband and wife are, are, are working. They have children that are not old enough to take off some of the chores from them. Do you understand? You know, as your children grow older, you appoint, you give them responsibility so that they also learn how to do it on their own, not... Uh, leaving your house, having not known it, how to run a home. So, in that situation, you it, it's almost like equal. Because both of you are working, you have the same hours, you have the same, almost the same amount of free time. So, it's not about, oh, me, I sit down. Uh, what food can I... Sometimes, I just... My wife comes back from work. She's tired. I sit down. I just go into the kitchen and do what. Oh my gosh! I, I just go into the kitchen and do what. I don't even need to ask. Her. She was saying, no, I remember no, no, one let day. Me, let me do that it. That person is working. No. If this guy is working, he's going to know. That day we were in his house and he was calling his wife. Ah, Coco, he just sat there. Coco, Coco, get me water to drink. I can't oh, remember. And, I, on. and 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 she had gone. She had gone to attend to their child, and he was sitting there with us. And these are young people, not, not even older people. Instead of getting up to get water, he sat there in the living room with us and was calling his wife, get me water to, I hope he watches this so that he can like know child. what he looks like. like. Yes. And then she brought water and gave it to him. And we were looking at ourselves like that. Like, I know. You know, some people have been trained. That's how to be a good wife. <laughs> I understand. You see, there are the, a lot of it. See, also, eh, also, don't also... Uh, castigate some of the women who do that. Hmm? Let me say this to you. Um, no, if, if, it's okay, a, if it's okay for if, her, that's okay. We're not here. Woman, to if a, yeah. yeah, if a woman has studied her husband and sees uh, the things that caress his ego, you understand? And things that like his ego is little and she needs to... Yeah, the things him. that <laughs> caress his ego, they will go ahead and do it for the sake of peace in the house. You understand me? And maybe later... Some people, we all, we all have different tasks. Some people will do it and gradually press it home. You understand me? Some some will totally reject it. In fact, the moment they know that you are calling them to bring water, they will just do like their name isn't that their name again. <laughs> you understand? But the issue basically, we have different ways. But the, the point that I'm trying to make <laughs> that was is that mind, men, men need to have a recalibration of their mind. That's why I say when you come abroad, it is not about the law favoring women. It is the, the fact that you as a person, you have entered a system that is a level playing field and you must calibrate your mind in everything. As we listed on the program, in, in, uh -huh. even in the children's education, even in, in, in if you are not married, in finding partners, you must recalibrate. And I, know, I remember of, that it's, it's, it's not yeah, about a lot of the things have been said by Coco. Concerning yeah. how to even woo a partner. Yeah, it's not about just it's not about just the couple too, because some of us forget that we have children, children that are going to be affected by these things that we do. So if I if I behave in a way that creates chaos between myself and my spouse, eventually it's going to come cascading down on us as a family. 
So uh, is my pride and my is my ego really that important? Is it much more important than having this family live together healthily than doing all these things that create all these problems, both for the man and the woman, for those wicked women, for those wicked women we're talking about, but also on our, on our side, we talked about education for the children and also. Um, I had wanted to get into like drugs, pregnancy and all that because some of us, uh, when we when we come, it's a different society. We may need to give more attention to those things um, because maybe pregnancy for the culture, for the society, maybe um, teenage pregnancy may not be frowned upon as much. Seems, may seem like it may not be frowned upon as much. And the children here, um, even as young as 13, some are going for contraceptive contraceptives so that, to prevent pregnancy. And then because they are already they're already in that culture and they're doing that, they come to school and they have those discussions and they, they start to become sexually active earlier and they have those discussions with their peers. And then your children are listening to those things and they see that their mates are having uh, relationships and then they may want to get into those relationships. So those are things that we need to pay more attention to. Some of us will now fall into it. If everybody else is doing it and they're doing it around them, are we going to um, say to ourselves, if we don't do as the others are doing, like get your children contraceptives, they may end up this way? Let, let, let me say, let me contribute something here. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems Coco has, uh, Coco has yes. left us or something. Excellent. Yes. Now, what I, what I say to people is that, eh? If, if there's any way that you need to constantly talk to your children mm. and lead them closer to God, it is when you come abroad. <laughs> when you yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. When you come abroad, when you when you relocate abroad. You need, if you were not, if you were talking to them maybe for like one hour within a week, you probably need to increase it to like four hours mm. within a week to sit down with them and discuss issues and talk to them and advise them on where to go, especially when you have grown-ups, daughters, or uh, especially daughters, sons, sons, the, I won't say the work is easier on the side of the drugs, but uh, uh, if you, because... But you also if, don't want your sons to go and impregnate someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, no, I'm not saying, but you know that to a very large extent, yeah, um, a lot. I won't, I don't want to. Sound, There's more pain on the woman. Yeah, There's more yeah, pain no, on no, the yeah, woman. I, I don't want to sound. Uh, no, but it's true. It's true because you're the one who's going to carry that pregnancy. Women are a lot more emotional. Oh. Women, 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 women react. You understand to words. You understand me. Women react to words than men. Why well, we are this? Okay. Yeah, women. Women react to words more than men. So. Be, a lot of the times, eh, uh, the mind of a child or the of a female child can change, even with different hearing different things, and they can they can become confused and all. And, but I'm not trying to be um, chauvinist, you know, as a, a chauvinist. You know, yeah. what I'm what I'm trying to say is that the concentration here, you will still give attention to your male ch uh, children. But the concentration here is more with the girls because they are open to a lot more. They are open oh, to right. what the boys, yeah, what the boys are open to, and more. Do you understand? You do the same thing with the male with the male children, but your concentration should be more on the child, talking to them, because there are a lot of things that that are established in the system that are detrimental to the growth of a young adult and they've done it to the point where it's all about freedom and what mm -hmm. the system here has done is that yes. he has taken away their real freedom yes. and giving them pseudo freedom yes you know so they are grappling with the pseudo freedom and they are happy Meanwhile, the freedom the that can entrap you yeah the real freedom the, the freedom that can make you destroy your life has been given to them Mm. You understand me, but the freedom that retains that humanity and retains a lot of things has been taken away from them. But they are not; they've not recognized. That's the problem with the system abroad. It, not mm. all, but a lot of the system abroad. 
So what you need to do is to tell them, this system, if you feel that you can do anything and do anyhow, these are the likely repercussions. They will not tell you. Okay, let me give you an example. They allow, what, what do you call it now? Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Cannabis. You understand me? They allow cannabis to be mixed with uh, uh, with uh, gummies. Do you understand me? And they are being mm -hmm. sold. They, are, they allow it with cookies. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And they know that young people, you know, they like to eat gummies and cookies. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So what are they doing? You are allowed to eat it. But what it will do to you in the long run is an addiction to cannabis. So you are, you are being made a customer, future customer for cannabis sellers. Because the more you eat it, the more you want it. So you have a freedom right now that is already putting you in jail for the future. Yes. Thing. Yes. You understand? No, I'm even talking about where cannabis is legalized. Mm. You understand? But is it is detrimental to your health? And you are being given the freedom unknowingly. So... A lot, so there's a lot of guide, and you talked about uh, pregnancy. There's a lot of talk you need to talk to them. You understand? You there, there are side effects to using all of those drugs early in life. Yes. You understand me? When a child's uh, reproductive system is not fully formed, you get what you understand? When I say childbearing uh, system, not just reproductive, but childbearing system is not mm. fully formed, and then you start loading that child. Mm. With, uh, what is the long-term plan? The long-term plan is to control their population. And though that means the moment you start using that as a child, you are not in control of how many children or whether you would even have children in the long run. So they are side, they, there's, a, there's an agenda, there's a plan, but yes. children don't know the overall plan. So it's better for us to actually let them know that there is something else that is under what the freedom that yes, you're getting. You got and actually to spell it out so that they know that the there's a surreptitious the plan. Yes. That, that, the talk is not about that. Ah, this is not good. You must not do it. Oh, this you just bad. hit something, you just hit something strong here. I love this. So it's not about this is bad, don't do it. This is good, do it. No. It's about an expose of a larger picture. Because children, their frontal lobe is not fully developed. So they don't, they, most of the time, that's why teenagers make a lot of mistakes. They, they, they don't see the full picture. They don't see That's reminding me of something else. Akin, do you know, we're going to have this conversation. Um, did you hear this thing about masturbation and the, and the link to prostate cancer? Um, yes, that was it. Did you hear that? I've not I've not read that, but the okay. the only thing that they've been banding around is that uh, you need to have sex twenty one times in a month for you to avoid <laughs> prostate, and that's that's hogwash. That who needs to everybody even that even men, teenagers men, men even the young men. even teenagers. Eh, wait now, see when they th those are the things you need to guide teenagers and young people from. You understand me? When a when a, a statement is thrown out there, you understand me. And it's generalized and it's not age gapped. So what, what you're saying is that it applies to every adolescent without saying it. So, and they are also open to the same news. They are also open to the same update. And of course, people will choose the easier route. If you've given yeah. me this license, why won't I take it? And you, if you are if you're a parent and you are not pointing out the provisos and the conditions and everything and that it does not apply to them, they will just take it upon and they, they run with it. They might not do anything now, but in another two, three years' time, it's still it's ingrained in their brain. I love this because what so, this is so it's those, like, it's those like... are the things, those are the things you must look out for. You understand me? Uh, and then two, you know, uh, three, we're talking about children education. Where your child is educated is very important. A lot of people just go to an area, maybe they, they, they come abroad, they stay in a place, they just go, oh, oh this the closest school to my child. The closest school to your, to your house might not be the best school. 
Yeah, because usually you, 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 the kids, the children go to the school that's closest, to, that's in the vicinity. Well, where well, uh, well, I, I, I think I know better. So, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, you understand me? So I didn't do that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. There, in, in every country, there are rating agencies. Even for public school, let's even say you don't have money to pay for private school. Even for public schools, when you go abroad, there are rating agencies. No country has less than two or three major rating agencies. Pick the best rating agency and look for the school that has the highest educational rating. The, the, the result of the students is, uh, is uh, uh, correspond, is corre uh, correspondingly applies to the quality of the education they are receiving in that school. Mm -hmm. You understand? If, if the rating says this school is very high, you understand? Mm. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Okay. So, I, I was even thinking of a situation where, because, because in this society, like for instance, here in Canada, yeah. Um, we have lots of people that have risen through the ranks at work yeah. without a degree. And you know that yeah. this society doesn't always, it's only now, I, I guess because of the influx of immigrants that lots of people are now beginning to also realize that getting a university degree is something that may be of importance because to yeah. them, they can start right after high school, secondary school. No, no, I'm even, I'm even talking about high school. I'm not talking about university. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm I know. About when you come here and your children mm -hmm. are within the uh, no, no, I'm pointing out that elementary and high school. Uh, no, level. I know, I know, I know. Okay. What I was referring to, what I was, because another thing that I wanted us to talk about was the fact that in this society, because some, some, some Nigerian children have yeah. actually said and have stopped at after high school, which is something that they wouldn't have done back home. And I'm talking about people whose parents, yes, even people whose parents were very well educated, yeah. right? And okay, I know that we may want to say maybe the parents didn't do their homework, right? But one situation that I'm talking about, there, there were some situations that came up in the family and that's how they ended up this way, right? Oh, yeah. um, because maybe sometimes you have someone who is, you have a parent who is doing everything in the best interest of the children and then somebody else has some other ideas and corrupts the mind of the children one way or the other because maybe yes because maybe they're having issues with their spouse and then they start to corrupt the children's minds and then maybe they want to make things easier for the children so that the children will will, will favor them against the other parents yeah. and then you end up yeah you end up here where you cannot even discipline the children and so of course they're going to always take the easier route so yeah. then the child ends up looking at the society after all people are working without degrees and they are the manager at this um, business and that company and all that. And they feel that they too can also drop out of school after high school and rise through the ranks. But forgetting that you are of a different race yeah. and that you're not going to have the same. Yeah, path. What I say to people is that, eh, and I link it to the first thing I said when I started my, when I started to talk about this schooling thing or about talking to children. Here, you cannot afford not to talk to children, to your children regularly, because for every time they go out of the house, they have been, they are being faced or they are being introduced to some ideas of life. Mm -hmm. that, they are and, talking about dropping yeah, out that, after that are school. not beneficial to them, that are detrimental to their growth. Mm -hmm. So. You, as a matter of fact, you must always be feeling their pulse and hearing them out. It's not a function of do this, don't do this. It's about hearing them out, as in knowing their thoughts. Oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about? Is more of you asking questions and allowing them to to speak their heart, so that you can see what they've heard, and then you can take a position from what they've heard. You can either you know, uh, um, uh, agree with them and say, okay, okay, that's good. Or say, no, that's not good. See, this is what is, and paint a larger picture of mm -hmm. that thing to them. Because I'm sure they're talking about those things in school and they're hearing those things. Yes, and, yes. And, tell, and, tell, and you can wrap it up by saying, look, I'm your father, I'm your mother. I want the best for you. Even though those people who have told you this, this is... Not even, not, you're not even going to get the same yeah opportunities as they are because they yes. are, you, are, you are still different from them yeah so it's okay like me i i picked my i picked my children's school online 
I went online while I was still in Nigeria and I picked their schools and I picked in this region, I picked them for my girls, I picked the best schools. And it's, put, it's, show, it's, it's showing in their grades. It's showing in how they are excelling. I told them, I said, in all that you do, be a leader of thoughts. Be a leader of thoughts. Don't be a follower of thoughts. Your, 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 your likes might not be many. But when you're a leader of thought, you will stand out. And that's all they followed, especially my first daughter. You understand? Now, the issue basically is that parents need to do their own work. You must know that you are constantly up against an idea of life that will not help, that will, will not totally or support your children fully in terms of them becoming the best that they can be within the system. They cannot go the way a typical, whatever, American, Canadian, uh, uh, Britain. Britain or whatever would do. So they've got to go the extra mile. And as you said earlier, education is one of the ways to go the extra mile so that you can compete. Because whether you like it or not, you can say, I'm not competing against anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm yes, you are competing with yourself, but you have got to be the best of yourself. For you to even stand any chance thank you very much for sharing all that with us yeah. so i'm sure that anyone who listens to this is going to pick some good ideas and from this conversation and with that we will wrap up this topic thank you for being with us uh, remember to go through our video library and see what resonates with you watch and give us a comment so that we can continue these conversations bye, -bye.